The raven landed on the deck where Harry was getting his daily rays. Surprisingly, he had grown a little bit of an olive complexion, and instead of asking his permission, I had gotten in the habit of sketching him from inside out of view. The raven, or was it a crow, caught and Harry perceived it, and just then we saw that it had a little scroll in its talons. It looked a little confused, as if it were waiting for us to confirm something. Wire? I said from the doorway of the cabin. I got the little keychain from on top of the piano, but couldn't find any wire anywhere. Finally, I decided on a little bit of white ribbon that was laying about and forced it through the loop on the keychain. I hoped it would be satisfying enough. I placed it by the raven on the railing, who looked apprehensive. But then it released the little scroll and tentatively picked at the keychain, judging its weight. Perhaps it was trained to stay until we had read the full message. It read, from Leona's distinct handwriting. Hello, you two. I'm breaking our rule of communicating in written form, but times have been exceptional, as I'm sure you'll agree. I hope you're still in Amsterdam and doing well enough since your ordeal. I was happy to help. I wish I could have stayed and caught up with you, but as you know, I'm rarely away from Balkis for long. In any case, I had hoped for us all to reunite but unfortunately there have been some unforeseen changes. Balkis was in his cat form when I returned home, and despite my efforts, seems unwilling to return to base. I think it has to do with the pain in his legs, although I suspect it is also a weakening in his powers that has him resisting any further change. I hoped that with time he would transform back, but whenever I muster the energy to assume an animal form, I find him harder and harder to communicate with, as if his human, his vampire self, is growing more and more distant. Worries aside, he seems content, and so I try not to panic, as I am wont to do in my cursed way. Otherwise, I recall with fondness our escapade to Nettle's apartment, that delightful painting and all the adventure that followed. I am still unsure how it guided us all the way to you, but I'm sure Neto will explain it sometime. Balkus has a contact that you may or may not know of that was on an expedition to find some answers, a search for some rare medicine to help him. Before I left, Balkus told me that they may return soon. They're a trustworthy quantity, I think. In any case, I won't be leaving here until I hear from them. Visit me here if you like, or send back a message if you care to with a raven, who hopefully hasn't flown away by now. Hello to your bunny, Leona. Harry found a tiny bit of room on the scroll which had been written on double-sided and wrote on it, Stay, we will come and showed it to me. I nodded, I wrapped it back up and handed it to the corvette who looked anxious, but finally it gripped it in one talon but released the keychain before flying away. Ah, I guess it does not like the ribbon. It was worth a shot. Hopefully it was not insulted. Harry? Are you worried about Balkis? A little, but just thinking. He mentioned about this person, but I didn't ask him about it. Now I feel bloody stupid. I was too self-absorbed, like usual. You had a lot going on, Harry. Don't beat yourself up, and... After all, Leona says it is someone to trust, so perhaps we will have to... Someone Balkis trusts, and Leona trusts Balkis, but that is perhaps her own weakness. She always had the habit of drawing battle lines. Had, Harry. We've all been through changes. Yes, I'm... I'm just concerned. I've never seen him so hurt, not since since just before the Collective, but surely I will feel better when we're there. Do you have any reason for us to delay? <sighs> no, it was nice to be here, but I am ready. Being uprooted so many times was getting tiresome, but at least now Bunny and Harry were with me and were starting to feel like home. Harry insisted I take art supplies, but I was too shy to do so. I squirreled away the sketches I had done behind some canvases. Perhaps they would amuse the owner. I knew that Harry would want them, but I would make him something else later, perhaps. 
It only later occurred to me that although I perhaps was not drawing in any different way, my self-critical eye had started to fade away since... since the painting in Woonsocket. It made me think of the talisman by Paul Serrusier, and suddenly I craved to be in France. A dog howled like a wolf near our boat, and both me and Bonnie were startled. Harry laughed. <laughs> it was just a beagle, hunting dog, he said more to Bunny than to me. We packed our meager bags and walked to the train station, which took us to the airport. Bunny circumvented security with little children squealing and causing a bit of mass confusion, but once through we were reunited and made our way to the waiting area. We flew first class, and I had some champagne, although... I felt guilty doing so in front of Harry, but the stewardess made it sound like it was a requirement, so I accepted. Almost as if to make amends, I took out a charcoal pencil on a little paper and started to draw as we took off, maybe to calm my nerves, but also because I knew it would please Harry to see me do so. I drew an abstract form, water perhaps, and then some foliage, an entrance to somewhere I did not know where it came from, just being artsy. Where is that? Asked Harry. Oh, just making it up, Harry. Nowhere I know. Reminds me of a painting I used to have. Yes, perhaps I saw it. I don't know. <laughs> oh, the champagne made me a little tipsy. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Feel free. Sorry, I won't disturb your drawing. No disturbance. Just then the stewardess came back carrying a bottle and I tried to hand the glass to her, but she misinterpreted and poured me another full glass. I was too embarrassed to refuse. Ah, well, Harry seemed amused. We could see the sun almost setting through Harry's porthole. Would the little raven beat us to London, I wondered. I was halfway through my second glass of bubbly and felt myself grow loose. Harry, hmm. have you ever, um... Have you ever, um, beside um, the obvious, have you ever been much attracted to, uh, let's say romantically, to another vampire? Well, complicated question. Hard to say if I was ever romantically attracted to anyone, actually, before mm, the obvious, but that had to do with a lot of factors. I see. Why do you ask? Well, you see, I... I have never myself, not that certain vampires haven't tried to engage with me, but it is not uh, gel with me, um, but, uh, yes, well, I said I would speak on it. This woman, Lucy, I will admit I do have some attraction for her, although the reason I kissed her was not entirely related to that. I would never be so bold. Which was? Revenge, I think. I see, and are you considering that this isn't in her in their plan, possibly? She was quite apparent in her flirtations, and Simon thinks she's not telling the truth. Do you? Harry looked out the window at the sunset. I think she thinks she's telling the truth. I'm not convinced he hasn't used his powers on her. Sure, sure. I finished my champagne and just then some mild turbulence made me drop it on the floor. The plane began to take more elevation and it started to roll down the aisle. I was going to get up to get it, but just then the pilot came on the intercom. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some unexpected weather ahead at our arrival, uh, so we're going to try to get above it and get you there on time. Please fasten your seatbelts as there may be some turbulence. There was turbulence indeed, more than Harry had ever experienced it would seem, for even he looked nervous. Bunny came out my bag and looked concerned. I nestled her on my lap as we shook indescribably hard. Harry, is this normal? I don't know. There certainly wasn't anything in the weather forecast. The pilot came back on. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the inconvenience. We seem to be having a uh, weather event that is completely unexpected, so I'm sorry to say we're going to be turning back and redirecting to another airport. Again, we apologize, but please fasten your seatbelts and we'll be out of this turbulence uh, very soon. Out of the porthole, I saw a flash of lightning. Thunder. Then more lightning had peered out into the almost complete darkness, and in my slightly inebriated mind, I thought I saw something though it was most likely just a shape. I saw the shape of a shark flying through the air, lit intermittently by the lightning. Lucy, I said out loud, 